Hi, I'm Stan Besaidnet. I'm an accident reconstructionist based in South Africa in Cape Town. South Africa was made famous by people like Nelson Mandela, a man that spent 27 years in jail and then eventually getting released from Robben Island and after that becoming the president of South Africa and ending the reign of supremacy and apartheid as we know it. South Africa also opened its doors to millions around the world as it hosted the FIFA World Soccer Cup in 2010. Of course South Africa is also unfortunately known for having a terrible road traffic safety track record. According to the arrivalive.co.za website the uh, 2009 Road Traffic Management Corporation statistics indicate that more than 10,000 people die per year in South Africa. In response to these statistics, we are constantly exploring new and innovative technologies. As an example, we were once appointed in a matter that happened in Johannesburg, South Africa, a city made popular once again by the Hollywood blockbuster District 9. In this instance, Two vehicles collided in the intersection, resulting in as many fatalities. It was considered a high-profile crash, and we were obviously appointed to analyze and reconstruct. Since this was a high-profile case, and since 3D laser scanning technology and total stations were not immediately available in the environment, we opted to use uh, photogrammetry. But we needed to be highly accurate. Of course, the police that attended the scene took photographs from an investigative perspective only, only their cameras were not calibrated to our requirements and more importantly they didn't know or wasn't aware of our needs. We were also appointed some time after the case, so we had to attend to the scene after the scene was cleared. Of course by now some of the marks left by the police had been uh, faded away. So we had to go to the scene, we had to remark those and we had to place cones back in the positions in which they were originally placed with the help of the investigators originally involved. Because we couldn't take photographs while there was traffic operating in the area which could result in vehicles obscuring some of the elements that we wanted to photograph, we had to effectively block off the whole intersection and clear it of traffic. We brought in a helicopter, landed the helicopter to see after it was cleared of course, uh, got onto the helicopter and then started to fly over the area, orienting ourselves to the specific uh, location and more importantly the angles at which we needed to take photographs. We then flew over the scene as explained and we started to take photographs out of the air using a Sony Alpha 100 DSLR 10 megapixel camera. When we completed with this process we obviously landed back down, cleared the scene again, let everybody carry on and then returned to our office in order to analyze the results of what we taken at the scene. We proceeded to mark all the relevant points in the various photographs after having imported them into our photogrammetry software. But in this instance we needed quite a number of points so we had to mark an excess of 200 points in order to get an accurate scene representation. Once we finished with the photogrammetry aspect of the analysis we of course had a 3D point cloud. But photogrammetry software enables us to create models but not to animate or analyze. So we needed to export those results into a second program within which we were then able to create an accurate 3D drawing of the environment. Now although our analytical software allowed us to go into a 3D environment we were not able to work in 3D permanently and it certainly could not create 3D scenes at the level or detail levels that we required in order to analyze appropriately and represent in court. So although we could analyze in the second program, we needed three programs. One to do the measurements or photogrammetry, one to create an accurate 3D model and where we can work in a permanent 3D environment and then yet a third to analyze the crash. In the end, we were able to measure the scene accurately, were able to present uh, a properly designed 3D model in court, and more importantly, were able to analyze the crash scene. But it took a hell of a long time, and it was a lot of effort. Now, they say hindsight is 2020, and when we came across ARIS 360, it was as if we'd come across what I can only describe as reconstructive nirvana. Here we had an accident reconstruction package that enabled us to create accurate 3D drawings in permanent 3D space, interacting with the models as we place them on the scene and to animate and reconstruct without having to switch between 2D and 3D or use multiple packages. ARIS 360 would have allowed us to reconstruct the scene in minutes compared to the days it took us originally. So if we had access to ARIS, we would have simply gone to the Google Earth interface, we would have selected the, the site for which we already had the actual coordinates, we would have brought that image straight into ARIS to scale already it would have been in a 3D environment, we'd have been able to go straight ahead, place our 3D models at a multiple points of impact and animate all within a matter of minutes. Of course, reconstruction and analysis still requires a degree of knowledge, but with the tools in hand, 
even a novice reconstructionist or a responding officer can create an accurate scene and accelerate the work profile and ultimately present in court in a professional manner. In fact, I, I was so impressed by what I saw with ARIS 360 when I first was introduced to it that I decided to become an international trainer with ARIS. At the end of the day, I feel that uh, it would be much more effective to be able to teach in an environment where we could see smiling faces within minutes instead of puzzled faces after a day of training. Some packages are nice and powerful, but they are fairly technical, and a lot of people battle to grasp some of the modern software technologies, specifically the computer environment and 3D animation, of course. Also be sure to remember that ARIS users now also get access to free vehicle model databases, to recall databases, to vehicle crush stiffness coefficients, to sisters and clones list, even to motorcycle vehicle specifications. So at the end of the day, this is what it's all about. It's about getting everything in one place, not having to use multiple packages and being able to work rap rapidly. Now many packages will try to compete, uh, others of course will try to copy and compare and even others will try to outmarket what Aris360 can do. But honestly, here is one package where within one environment you can do everything you need to do at the level of quality required for us to do the kinds of work we do, and obviously so it will for you. This is Stan Besaidnote from IBF Investigations in Cape Town, South Africa, supporting Aris360.